In episode 13 of Ragna Crimson, Starlia's forces are positioned, anticipating the entry of Alto Zora's forces into their base. However, their expectations take an unexpected turn when several humans enter, seeking protection from Starlia's forces. E.K., the leader of this group, recalls warnings about Zora's drug crafting and hypnotic powers, urging everyone to stay vigilant as the humans launch an attack. Starlia intervenes to assist her comrades in dealing with this unexpected human threat. Starlia makes a decisive announcement, stating that they should protect only the humans under their care and their fellow soldiers. She considers everyone else a threat and is willing to eliminate them herself if necessary. The responsibility for safeguarding the base is entrusted to E.K., while Starlia, accompanied by Greya, Hisela, Chris, and Nazarena, heads into the forest. Zora is thrilled by Starlia's resolve, eagerly anticipating their upcoming battle. Crimson provides a recap on the unique talents of superior dragons, emphasizing how their power is measured by the length of their maturation. The shorter the maturation time, the more powerful they become. Meanwhile, in Ragna's battle against Terratectra, the latter admits a lack of talent but compensates with the experience gained during his human years. Ragna struggles to land a decisive blow, realizing he may need a significant amount of Silverine to harm Terratectra. Determined, Ragna plans to channel all his power into his sword for a powerful strike. As Greya, Hisela, and the aerial unit patrol the forest from above, they are unable to detect Zora's whereabouts. Starlia highlights the exceptional skills of the twins and receives information that many dragons are heading toward the base's east entrance, potentially anticipating their next move. Zora, acknowledging Starlia's forces, checks on Terratectra, who believes he has defeated Ragna. Zora probes further to determine if Ragna is the Reaper who attacked Ultimatia, but Terratectra believes otherwise. Inferior dragons suddenly appear, weakening Ragna, and Terratectra, considering Ragna a lower priority, attempts to flee. Zora intervenes, instructing Terratectra to visit Starlia's location and use his cannon attack to annihilate her and her forces. Ragna attempts to stop Terratectra but is overwhelmed by the combined might of the inferior dragons. Fortunately, Shin and Garm arrive to assist Ragna. Rather than expressing gratitude, Ragna dismisses Shin and Garm, insisting he can handle the situation alone. This provokes Shin to challenge Ragna to a duel, surprising him. A flashback reveals events four days prior, where Starlia advises her forces to avoid conflicts with superior dragons. Shin finds Starlia's caution cowardly, leading to a confrontation between them. After a heartfelt discussion with a former comrade, Shin reveals that 120 soldiers have chosen to stay with Starlia. In the present, Shin delivers a thoughtful speech to Ragna, expressing their collective reasons for fighting and stating that he doesn't care about Ragna's motives or strength. This openness surprises Ragna. Shin confers with Graham, updating him on their situation, and they plan to confront Terratectra. Meanwhile, Starlia plans to use her powers to claim the forest as her territory, and her comrades update her on their findings. Zora, recognizing Starlia's strengths, senses her plotting with a magic absorption circle. The plan triggers memories of Zora's Solarian days, where Dragon's magic was intended for battle purposes, fascinating him. The episode concludes with Zora laughing, indicating he is aware of Starlia's intentions. And that's it for this episode, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.